in terms of China relations. Uh, how significant is this visit and the fact that, that Wang Yi has now actually met the, the Prime Minister, not just Sergei Lavrov? Um, well, I think he's, he's due to be meeting the president. Um, uh, and I think it's very significant. This is the end of a European tour for Wang Yi. He was at the Munich Security Conference where the US Secretary of State had very stern words for him saying, um, we warn you strongly against uh, supplying lethal force to Russia. Um, uh, Anthony Blinken says that China is pursuing a dual strategy on the one hand, uh, proclaiming that it wants to pursue peace. And uh, there are reports that um, the Chinese Premier uh, Xi Jinping on Friday will actually deliver some kind of speech a peak, uh, demanding peace uh, to com commemorate the one year anniversary of this war. Um, and yet at the same time there he is with the head of the Security Council yesterday, Nikolai, Nikolai Patrushev, who's pretty much the most hawkish of President Putin's advisers, meeting the foreign minister this morning and meeting President Putin, reportedly also preparing a summit between the Chinese and the Russian leaders. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, the, the discussion with Patrushev yesterday talked about the fact that China and Russia would stand against unilateral bullying, that they would pursue a multilateral world, a multipolar world, all the kind of rhetoric that we hear from Russia. So I don't think uh, China is a neutral arbiter in all of this, and I think it is uh, extremely significant that um, they are in Moscow to get there. It's certainly very significant for Vladimir Putin's attempts to make it look like he is not isolated. The question really is, is Anthony Blinken right? Is China going to throw its uh, aid in militarily, which I think up to this point it has not, because of the risk of secondary sanctions and the fact that China doesn't want to risk uh, its connections with the global economy just to back um, Russia. Uh, it has, uh, uh, you know, has, has, has maintained a fairly... Um, constrained position uh, on the war in Ukraine. It refuses to call it a war. It uses Vladimir Putin's terminology of a special military operation. Um, we shall have to see. It will depend on the outcome of the next uh, meetings that we see between these uh, two powers. I'm outside the Luzhniki Stadium where Vladimir Putin presumably after this meeting with Wang Yi is due to appear on the uh, stage soon. It is bitterly cold here and there are tens if not hundreds of thousands of people. That stadium can fit about 200,000 people in it. We've seen uh, buses uh, bringing people here. A lot of people are organised by state corporations uh, to come. Universities, we've spoken to students who say that they were told to come. And there are quite a few people already leaving. You know, you take the picture and then you go. Uh, but that said, pretty much everybody that we've spoken to has had a, a, a very patriotic mindset. They believe that the West is out to get them. They believe that this war is a good thing. Young men I've spoken to said that they would go and fight for their motherland uh, if there was another round of mobilization, if it was called upon them. Um, I'm like, well, why, why are you fighting? Why are you defending their motherland? They don't really know. They don't really have much to say. Um, but they believe Vladimir Putin. Uh, they believe his rhetoric. And uh, we're about to hear another one of those um, speeches, which I'm sure will uh, cast damnation on the West, just as we heard uh, yesterday in his address, um, and proclaim Russian unity. And certainly, it does feel from my reporting here over the past year that that liberal voice that we did used to hear grows fainter and fainter.